Hey there guys, good morning. So this morning, uh, Kate is going to be uh, joining me to talk about a conversation that is very near and dear to my heart. It's about listening to your body. So a lot of us uh, receive messages from our body on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis, but we're so busy with whatever is going on, um, our work tasks, our kids, our um, to-do lists, all this sorts of stuff that um, notification sign to um, our, the messages that our body tells us. Good morning. Hi. So, hi. Kate and I are going to talk about how to tune in and turn off that do not disturb sign from our body. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> So, um, Kate, I'm going to give you a brief bio about you, and then if you would like to add anything, please let me know. I love your hair, by the way. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so Kate, uh, how do you say your last name? Merolt. Merolt. Okay, Kate Merolt is a life and body coach who fiercely believes that your body is here to be your partner and ally in joy and fulfillment in this lifetime. And that for too long, our society has been denying the power that comes from a harmonious relationship between mind, body, and soul. So true. Uh, Kate works with women to reclaim their power and energy, connect to their inner wisdom, and activate the voices of their souls so they can show up fully in love, work, and life and step fully into the creativity and self-expression. Yeah. So anything you'd like to add? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I just feel like for most of us, we're taught that our creativity and our power comes from achievements and from learning skills. And I think that that, like, yes, sometimes we do need to learn skills in order to create the things that we're sure. building. But really, all of that stuff comes from within. We are born into a space of have, like being able to take up space. We all have our own unique energy. And creativity, creative energy, life force energy, it's always within us. And it wants to help us create really fun, awesome lives. And the way to do that is through our bodies. Yeah, so true. I mean, comment below. Uh, I think a lot of the physical therapists and yoga teachers um, that I'm friends with can relate to this. I know this is especially true myself is, you know, it's easy to wait to fully embody all that we're capable of till we finish a certain degree or get this certain skill set when really we have all that we need right inside and those will enhance anything but it's not required um, to really uh, step into your own and do the work. Morning Avalon! Um, so comment below if you are waiting and you need a little boost we're here to help. Um, <laughs> So what's your area of expertise? What do you really specialize in? Yeah, it's, it's a couple of things, but I come from a background of really understanding the body physiologically and energetically. So looking at like, what are the things that are showing up in your body and how is that actually informing where maybe you need to look at your, some things in your lives and like in your life and what might need to make change or if there's like people you need to shift in your life, like places you need to shift in your life. So like if, if there's tension or pain or constant fogginess, like stuff like that, those are all signals that your body's trying to give you that something is off, whether it's just internally, like a physical or hormonal imbalance, something like that, or something energetically that needs to shift in your life. And so my superpower is kind of helping people figure out what that means and then also how to tune into that for themselves so that they then understand what their body's trying to tell them because we don't actually need to get into like horrific pain in order to make changes. That's like the last resort, as you know, right? That's like the last resort of the body. It's like, okay, you're not listening to the subtle stuff. So like, here you go. (laughs) Totally. Yeah, I see this all the time in the clinic. Like, and even for myself, sometimes I'm like, I'm too busy. I don't want to hear what I, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden my body's like sending me like warning signs or bells or it physically shuts me down so I can't move and I have to listen. And I don't need to wait that long for that to happen. Or uh, a lot of times I see uh, low back pain, Mm -hmm. right? That keeps Mm -hmm. occurring. And, um, the patient or student or whatever, they know what to do physically, right? The stretches, the strengthening, they know what to do to help it, but why does it keep happening? And usually it's because of these deeper stuff that we really have to 
peel back the layers and 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 get to. So it's I I really love that. Um, what does wellness mean to you? Is it, is it part of all that you just described? Yeah, I feel so funny because like I've been thinking about the word wellness a lot lately because like in some ways it's become this like new trendy thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah. it's also it not is. new. Well, like to me, to right. me, wellness is it's like your overall sense of well being and it's like looking at every single area of your life and not and it's like kind of like it's an anti like not getting like panicked or anxious or like freaked out about something, but it's also the like. It's like a peaceful, like open, vibrant feeling that, yes, it shows up physically in our bodies, but it's also like, how do I feel in my relationships? How do I feel at work? Is like, do I feel like I have this overall sense of well-being when I'm looking at finances or when I'm like working on my projects? Or is that like a, um, is, is there something that's like sticky there? And so I think wellness is a great overarching term for looking at like, yeah, how do I experience all the different areas of my life? And based on how I feel, or what I'm noticing, are there ways that I could potentially improve or expand or open into something greater? Yes, exactly. So comment below, what does wellness mean to you? That's exactly why I named my business Ignite Wellness and not physical therapy, (laughs) because I thought physical therapy was focusing on pain and therapy, Mm -hmm. where wellness is all encompassing into the life. So yeah, if you've been having low back pain, we do look at low back pain, but we look at all these other areas as well, because you, you, you never know a relationship that you say that that's just not serving you anymore can be really affecting that or just learning how to communicate in a way with that particular. Anyways, it, it, can, it can get very deep um, into uh, an area or a subject that you might not think is relating to your pain and discomfort at all, but it could be. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, For me, uh, you know, as I switch into, uh, you know, the new office space, uh, financial wellness, I can feel I'm holding all this tension Mm -hmm. in my shoulders just because um, whatever. uh, Yeah. I guess a little bit more stressed out than used to. Yeah. Than used to, but uh, I'm trying to work with that and listen to that and then use my the tips that I know the oils the brass the just getting on the mat and all that kind of stuff and it really does help yeah but yeah and with most important believing <laughs> <laughs> yeah well what's cool about our bodies is it's it's like we you know that's that's clearly a pattern in your life like when you get stressed you get tense in your neck and your shoulders right and we could go into all the different reasons why that is we're not going to do that but it's like <laughs> but it's cool because one of the shifts, like this is one of the fundamental shifts that I like to have my clients start to make is like, instead of looking at that as like, Oh, my body's betraying me again. Or like, Oh man, like I can't believe I'm still feeling this. It's like, Oh, cool. This is a pattern that I've built throughout my life to keep me safe and to protect me and to be a signal. So how can I utilize that pattern rather than have it be this constant source of annoyance? Right. Right. Exactly. Or get mad or like, criticize yourself all that kind of stuff. yeah exactly exactly uh, so what's the biggest tip you give to a lot of your clients yeah and it's funny I've been thinking about that too <laughs> because I think the biggest thing is that it's all a practice there's no like mm-hmm. there's no end results There is a lot of integration into different ways of being, but like, kind of like you were just saying, it's like when we, when we move into a new level or a new experience, or if I forget to talk to my body for a couple of weeks, I feel it. And so it's not like a, it's not a place to get to, to be like able to talk to your body, to be in like an embodied state, to be in that place of wellness. It's an ongoing continual practice. And I think when we let go of that, like achievement mindset with it, that's when the real change can start to happen. I, yeah, I agree. Uh, so just to take that a step further, because maybe some of the people not listening or that are listening, they don't know how to talk to their body. Yeah. So how would you suggest for someone that maybe they hear messages from their body, but they're not exactly sure how to start that dialogue? Yeah. What would you recommend them starting with or an easy way to begin to start that communication with their body yeah um the biggest thing I mean I I, will tell you a couple of things but like one thing I always like to remember is that like our bodies don't necessarily speak English or whatever language you speak like they speak in their own way it's like so sometimes they do speak like we said intention in other things and to start that conversation it always starts with awareness like 
noticing what's happening in my body. So instead of trying to like get messages right away, I would encourage people to just take, take like two minutes, even longer if you want to, but like two minutes and just take a couple of deep breaths and scan your body head to toe and just pay attention. Like what, what are you aware of? Are there any sensations? Are there, is there any tension? Are there any areas that maybe like your brain wants to skip over as their temperature fluctuations. How's your heartbeat? Like what's like, notice all of the different things that are happening and do that regularly. And you'll start to notice when things change and then you can look at, okay, cool. So if that's changing, if that changed, be, like what, what might that have been because of like, why, what, like, why did that change? And you can start to get to understand the way that your body is signaling you. Um, another way that you can do this is, to if you want to experiment with like more direct communication right away is to say like okay and like think a lot of us who are like a lot of people who are disconnected from their bodies there is this kind of like reconnection that needs to happen which is why i suggest that first part and another thing is like just ha like talk to your body like okay so like maybe i haven't been listening for the past you know decades forever you know, whatever <laughs> how okay i'm here i'm listening and I would love some sort of signal today about like what you'd like me to do. Like what kind of movement would you like me to do? What kind of foods would you like me to eat? Like just send me a signal and I'll be paying attention. And that signal could look like anything. But I always like to tell my body like make it extra clear because I'm not super bright all the time. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, comment below. Who needs to start talking to their bodies a little bit? I know for me... Um, a couple of things that were really helpful was, num like you said, slowing down. Yes. And um, you can start with two easy areas that were um, a good gateway for myself was food. So as I eat, really noticing how my body responds to that food, because some food your body will really embrace and you'll feel really good and it's vibrant and energetic and other food like for me. If it's not the right food, it, it sits heavy in my stomach or I, I actually just don't even feel good. Um, or movement. So um, you can be in one yoga class and certain postures feel really great in your body. And others, you might have resistance. But pausing and noticing is that resistance coming from something that's new and different that maybe your body actually needs or maybe from fear mm -hmm. or is it resistance because it truly is not good for you but learning how to discern that as well um, is super important mm -hmm. as we're building strength and maybe healing from injury and that sort of thing. yeah um, and I want to say something too with like what you mentioned with food and even with movement as well is we've been trained to override our body signals with mm -hmm. what we think we're supposed to do. So yes. like one of the things that I actually have started doing again since you know, like over the years since I started to really connect with my body is that I didn't eat dairy for a really long time. And it was partly like, it was partly because I wasn't eating animal products for a long time and partly because I, it, dairy is bad. Like that's what, <laughs> that's what I had taken in as truth about what is nutrition and what is not. And it turns out that like at certain times during my, my cycle, like my menstrual cycle, my body actually really craves dairy, like craves cheese, craves yogurt. And when I, when I actually started listening to that and trusting that and, and like, you know, unwinding all the mental freakouts that happened because of, okay. because of yeah. my body, I like my cramps went away. Like I started to feel a lot better. Like I would, I wasn't as foggy, but it took me like getting over what I like my mind had decided was true based on outside authority to like tune into like, okay, my body's actually telling me this thing. And it's, it's, it's going counteractive to what I thought was true. And so that's, that's another thing to just pay attention to when you like, when you're getting into this space of listening to your body, your mind might have different ideas and that's okay. You don't have to be perfect about it. Keep tuning in, keep practicing. And it shifts mm -hmm. with different parts of life. Totally. Too. What worked maybe a month ago or a year ago, right today might not work at all. And it's going to be different from person to person and because we're all individual uh, humans beings. Absolutely. <laughs> So how do you work all this into your business, into your practice and working with others? Yeah. Um, so I do primarily one-on-one -on -one work with people. We do, it's, it's like a coaching type of practice where we talk and I do a combination of asking questions, listening, providing guidance around 
if it's if it's more like physically related or emotionally related, whatever that is. I do a lot of body connection practices with my clients, a lot of energy clearing and like just understanding what all is happening in there. Um, I also run a lot of retreats because I do teach yoga. I am an artist and I love to incorporate the movement and creativity into connecting with your body. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a retreat coming up? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have one mid-October. It's called Campfire Heart and it's for women Ooh. or women identifying people. Uh, and it's all about, yeah, like connecting to that fire in your heart through reconnecting and bringing your body back online and connecting to your sensuality and your stories and your artistic nature and all of these things that we tend to shut down and forget when we get too busy. So, totally. yeah. So true. Yeah. Who does that? <laughs> I, I, Never. I'm working, I'm working on it. Um, so, yeah, when we're done, just leave a link to that uh, retreat. So if people want to learn more, they can. Awesome. Uh, what's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome uh, owning your own business and trying to fit all this in? Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, one of the things that I've been really aware of and that has been really helpful for me, especially over the past couple of years is that when I first started my business, I was like, yes, space, freedom. I can do whatever I want, whatever I want. And then I realized that I actually thrive with structure that, but it has to be structure that works for me. And mm -hmm. so that, I mean, that's a constantly evolving journey as well, <laughs> is, is what, what are the, like, the frameworks and structures of how I work through my days and how I plan my weeks and my traveling and all of that stuff. Um, but also how it's really interesting that when I'm busier, I actually, there's, there's a balance, there's a dance on this line of like busy, where there's a, there's a sweet spot where I'm just busy enough that I'm doing everything I need to do, like taking care of my body, making sure, <laughs> making sure I eat all the foods I want to eat, like getting out of the house, doing all that stuff. If I'm too busy, then there's the burnout side of it where it's like, I never stop, never stop. It's always, always going. If I'm not busy enough, it's a lot harder to motivate myself to actually do the things that are going to support me in thriving. And so that's, that's been an interesting dance as somebody, you know, like I've had stage four adrenal burnout. Like I've, I used to get like 10 years ago, I would get sick every six weeks because I would just go so hard and then crash and then do it all over again. Yeah. And so it's, it's been an interesting journey, especially like being completely in charge of my own schedule to find that balance of like, actually, I do have capacity to do these things. And also, <laughs> also like paying attention to what I say yes to and what I say no to, because that leads to, can lead to either more energy or burning out as well. Yes. That, what, that's been a huge one for me too. Mm -hmm. And it's a, again, it's an evolution as, as new opportunities come in that, you know, I've never done before. I'm like, okay, I need to pause and really listen and see, is this, is this right for me right now? Yeah. Um, someone, Rebecca asked in the comments, um, Rebecca, this um, interview, it's going to be saved on our personal pages, so you can come back and listen to them anytime. You guys, and you don't have to watch the video. You can just put in earbuds and go for a walk and listen to the conversation. <laughs> that works for you, kind of like a podcast. So, um, yeah, they'll be here um, and um, in a couple places. So, Rebecca, you can for sure watch uh, later. Uh, and how do you bring this into your day-to-day, -day, not only in your, your business, but how do you bring the all-encompassing wellness of all the areas of your, of your life into your day-to-day -day life? Yeah, I mean, it, it, like, it, surprise, it all filters through my body. Um, like, I am, I am yeah. in constant conversation with my body. I'm constantly looking, or like, looking at and, like, taking a pause and looking at, like, how's my energy levels? What am I experiencing in my body? Like, when I first wake up, like that's one of that's one of the first things I think is like okay, where am I at? What do I need? Like what's what's my body looking for right now? Um, mm -hmm. And it's like it's throughout the day. I also um, to make this like bring this more to like a level of like I still I have reminders set in my phone like throughout the whole day. Like hey check in. Like hey when's the last time you drank water? <laughs> like what uh, when's the last time you stood up and like got outside? So like I I set reminders for myself to do these like to do some of the things that I know are going to help me feel good and keep me moving. Um, I've also had to learn to have really good boundaries, both with work stuff and in my life around like, when is it time to work? When is it time to decompress? When is it time to like be more social? And when is it time to be more internal? And, and it does, it shifts and changes all the time, which is why that continuous practice of awareness and checking in is so important. And it's, it's probably taken me 
about f- like like four or five years to like have this be such a like an integrated like no questions asked part of my life um but it started shifting things so much right away even when I would just do one or two check-ins a day yeah me too for me I've just been working on it the last year or so and I I have so much more to really deepen this connection the trust that I should say and the confidence and to know that what I'm hearing or feeling or experiencing is really what I need to do. Um, and so, but it, when I do trust it and I do believe in it, then it, it really changes everything. Uh, not only in my business, but like relationships, connections with my family and my friends. Um, it's, it's everything. Yeah. Um, in fact, that's why I uh, created that a journal. That's going to be yeah. a so the first, you know, it's just very simple, but it's a few prompts that you do in the morning and at night where you ask yourself when you wake up first thing, how am I doing? And you write it down. What do I need? And so you have it and then you can kind of plan your day based upon whatever your body um, soul tells awesome. you. And then at night you review like what really worked, what can be approved upon and then solutions and then you have it all for the next day. And so it's all in one place. I'm super excited. Yay. About it. I'm super excited to talk to Sounds about amazing. It. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so any parting words of wisdom for this morning? Um, take a deep breath and relax. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I say that a lot and I say it to myself too a lot because it, I, it, doing things like this, like it can seem daunting to like shift how you're relating to your body and how you're orienting and going throughout the world. And just like, it's, it's just awareness and practice and experimentation like get curious have fun with it and like don't worry so much about the results but more about like how do you feel moment to moment Mm -hmm. yeah so the breath has been huge because that helps me to slow down get grounded and then i can really um hear what's going on yeah so i love that yeah thank you um, so when we sign off here, will you leave your contact information and the re- retreat information below? Yeah. And that way you guys have uh, ways to get a hold with Kate. And I'm also going to um, put this uh, conversation in the Ignite Wellness community. Um, it's a Facebook group. So if you want to carry on the conversation in the comment thread and meet other like-minded thinkers, um, we'll all be located there. And that's it for now. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have very wonderful days. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, we'll just talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye.